Alrighty, good morning everyone. It has been a while since I've posted any video to YouTube and there's been a good reason why. I've had a lot of questions and emails and comments regarding, hey John, where have you been? What have you been working on? And by a lot of people, I mean absolutely zero. No one has commented or cared, but that doesn't matter. That's besides the point. Let me show you what I've been working on and why I haven't really posted any videos since Moab. I've been working on my new crawler hauler, a new place to live when I go and do my adventures. And I think it's finally time to give a little sneak peek of what I've made, so check it out. Boom, crawler hauler 2.0. Now, I will give you kind of a tour here. Everything on here was hand built from scratch I built the frame I built everything on this thing which has taken me quite a bit got the RV windows in there everything's bed lined but yeah why don't we uh why don't we check it out I think I've done a pretty good job so far don't you think it's still my first time so give it a uh, you know give me some slack if there's anything wrong and I've learned a lot while building this thing but it's pretty cool. Come on in and I will uh, kind of start giving you a tour and a sneak peek of it. All right, so we'll start off on the front here. Now, I do want to kind of preface all of this that nothing is finalized. This is just kind of a build up to this point, how I've done everything. If you guys see anything that I can improve on or do better, please make a comment down in the uh, comment section below and I'll definitely see if I can look into that and try to change things up. But starting off, I had to make the propane tanks here or the propane mounts made the propane mounts welded it all on i did all of the piping myself if you notice i don't actually have a regulator in here and there's a reason for that with the propane going into the into the camper everything that i'm using does not has an internal regulator on it so therefore by putting a regulator on here none of my stuff would work not my uh, mr heater wouldn't work my camp chef stove wouldn't work because it over regulated it they all have internal regulators and are meant to be hooked up directly to the propane so once i got rid of that regulator there everything's worked perfectly it's all internally regulated so i do have quick disconnects here i got the quick disconnects i got the shutoff valves everything like that um moving forward here this is the generator mount you can see that i've kind of fabricated everything here and i'll try to put pictures as i go on this i've got shock isolators on here to help kind of isolate it from the trailer i haven't figured out how i'm going to do the actual mechanism to lock the generator down and kind of hide it because i would like to be able to use it on the trailer so i don't have to disconnect it every time and move it away and run all the lines and everything so but that's where that's at right here moving over here you can actually see here is the propane line that I made to actually bring everything in. From the propane line, it's it's wide off, split. One One's going to go to the trailer. The other one's going to go to the generator. Now, I am going to go ahead and try to save up and get the Hutch Mountain conversion kit for my, uh, I have a Honda 2200i. I want to do the Hutch Mountain conversion kit on that so that way I can run it off of propane. And off of two 40 pound propane tanks, I should be able to run that generator for a very long time. So that's uh, one of the next things that I want to get. If you look over here, I've got a NOCO port here. It's an external one. So it's just a pass through for um, basically just the, the electricity when I get like short power hooked up to the generator or not. So um, these are going to be for the batteries I've already made insulated the holes here for the positive and negative leads once I get some batteries. So I don't have any batteries on this just yet, but I still need to figure out where I want to mount those and, and how to do that. And I definitely do want to plan to put solar, so. All right, so here is the next area of the build, these windows. I initially, and you'll probably see in the pictures here that, I, that I'll put in the video, I initially had house windows in here and house windows, I thought it was a great idea, I thought, because they were double paned, they were cheap, they're insulated, they're argon filled, they'd be perfect for the trailer. So I put everything in, and if you look here, you can probably kind of see where the, the old ones were. And after doing some more research, after I put the windows in, finally found out that putting house windows in a trailer is an extremely bad idea. The reason being is because the argon that's in there will eventually leak out from the vibrations of traveling 
when the argon does leak out, it's gonna pull all the condensed air from outside into it, permanently condensing the air so you can't see out of it, and then you basically lose your R value. I'm like, great. So I had to finally actually switch over to actual RV windows, which really, really sucked because not only did I already have to take the house windows out and retrofit them to put them in, but these things are stupid expensive. Uh, just one of these RV windows cost more than the three other house windows combined. So it was definitely a, a hard pill to swallow, especially since I made the mistake of putting the house windows in. So don't do that if you guys do this on your own. Put Actually save up, put the RV windows in, either get smaller or less windows, one or the other, but just do yourself a favor and, and get that. All right, so coming around to the back here, you can see that I actually made a ladder for this thing. The ladder was so I can access the roof, clear off snow. Um, next summer, I am gonna try to save up and actually put an AC unit and obviously a vent up on top. I'll probably do the vent sooner than next summer, but at least by next summer, I wanna put a, an AC unit up there. Cause I do have two inches of foam insulation on this thing. And it is, it's a lot with the windows and door shut, just my body heat will start to heat up the inside of this thing, which is awesome. Cause I need it as insulated as I can for, cause I wanna be able to use this in the winter time. So next up, as you can see, I did bedline the entire thing. It took me a while to figure out what I want to do for the outside. And I went with the bed liner, the roll on bed liner that I can get locally in stores. And I used the, uh, the Herculiner. And that's actually held up very, very well. I like that because I can always touch it up. If anything gets peeled off or damaged, I can just go back and touch it up again by myself. Um, and that's worked out really well, especially when I had to change the windows out. So that's why, for me, I wanted the bed liner. It gives it a little more texture, kind of covers up the wood grain, and man, does it seal it up. This thing is pretty rock solid, so I'm really happy with it. I'm just sitting on an old trunk, or an old uh, toolbox that I had. I just kind of bolted this thing down. This is just temporary. I just want to go ahead and put this on here, just so I have some extra storage for some, like maybe a little one pounder propane tanks, shovel, extension cord, stuff like that. I do want to exchange this out with a weather guard, something that's actually going to hold up to the, the weather and be able to hold a lot more, so it's just a lot more stout. This just looks really, really cheap on here, but it's what I have for right now, but I'll update that in the future. Lastly, in the back here, you can see I installed this E-Track system, and I installed the E-Track system for a couple reasons. One, I've got the seams from the two four by eight pieces of uh, sheet board or ply board on here, so that helps cover up the, the seam, makes it look a little nicer, but it also helps strengthen it up by bolting or uh, tying them together. And then in addition to that, I've got all these spaces to be able to hang stuff. I can put bags in here. I can put, um, I can hang different tools, accessories that I need. I've even seen like shovel or was it a uh, tables that you can hook on here. The other kind of cool thing is with these hooks that I have here, I can actually hang my hammock from here and hang it out to, out to the, um, the ramps, the, the ramps for the Jeep when they come up and down. So out in the summertime, I have a place to hang my hammock and hang out. The other cool thing about being back here is once the Jeep comes off of this, this entire area becomes my new deck. Check this out. So, like I said before, this would just be the deck area. So once the Jeep is off of it, I can bring up the, the ramps here and this will be my deck area where I can come and hang out, I can cook, I can put up a lawn chair and everything. It's pretty awesome. This is where I'm going to be able to hopefully be able to hang out with the awning, bring the awning up over here. So, but the Jeep fits perfectly in between here. That's what these uh, stops are for. The stops that you get in the exact same place every time. Because one of the things that you guys have to be really careful of if you build something like this is the entire weight and balance of the entire trailer. You can't have too much weight or too little weight on your hitch or else this thing is just gonna be a death trap on the highway. I'm sorry, but if you're one of the people that tow around the, and the truck's just bottomed out like that, dude, you need you need to fix that. That's, that's super dangerous. I, I hate it when I see people doing that. I actually have one of the way safe hitches on my truck. So I've been constantly checking out to see how much weight I've been putting on there. And when the Jeep is on here, I've got about 800 pounds of weight on the hitch. I keep building it, I'll still keep uh, keep working with this and playing around, but make sure you watch the weight and balance and see how much weight is on your hitch to make sure that you're not towing a death trap on the highway. Now we're on the passenger side where I actually decided to put the door. I put the passenger or the door on the passenger side because it just kind of emulates what most RVs do. 
So as you can see, I have another window and I have the door. The door I got off of out of a RV junkyard and I can post up some pictures of me uh, retrofitting that and fixing that up. It was originally like this old 80s like burnt yellow, white color, whatever like that. So I ended up painting it, sanding it, getting a lot of new uh, parts, hardware for it. And I think it actually turned out pretty good. As you can see, I got the door handle. I've got the other window. I even put some uh, the blinds or the shaded pleats, pleats, whatever they're called. I don't know. Yeah, correct me in the comments. I don't care. With the shades that are actually in the window, so I can get rid of the frost, frosted uh, normal RV window, and actually be able to see outside. Because that's why I wanted. I wanted big windows so that when I'm out adventuring, I'm out on my new trips and whatnot. There's going to be downtime. There's going to be time where the weather's bad or it's super rain. I can't do anything. Well, I still want to be able to come inside, hang out, have enough room to stretch out and see everything. I don't want to just be cooped up in like a little box. I want to be able to see. So I spent the extra money and got all the, the three big windows and then the clear window for uh, the door there. And it's actually worked out pretty well. But this build has been taking me about, oh, three months, I'd say. I think in actually one of my Moab videos, you can actually see kind of a reflection of the jeep that i was sleeping in it and it was just a, a shell at that point it wasn't actually anything built but this has been a long time coming i've wanted this idea so that i can get out go adventure and be able to actually take my jeep with me i could not find anything on the market that would allow me to haul a full-size jeep toy haulers just didn't work nothing worked so but this is my build so far. Now the inside is not done yet by far. I do have a bed in there. I've built for a, um, like a twin mattress. Um, I would like for, I definitely want to try to get a little bit further with the, the front end or the inside. So I need to start working on that. But this is my build so far and then I'll try to keep you guys updated. Sorry for not many having too many videos lately, but we'll keep checking it out and I'll keep showing you, showing it off. All right, so the last part of the video up here on the roof. Yes, I designed the entire thing so that I can walk around on the roof because eventually I do want to put solar panels up here. I want to put a vent right here in the center and right where I'm sitting, I want to be able to put that AC unit. So hopefully that'll be next summer that I can put that up here. But on the trailer here on top of it, you can see kind of how tall it is. The entire thing's about a seven by seven by seven foot box. Minus the little, uh, you know, 45 slant up here. So it has been a fun trip so far, but I just wanted to show you the roof real quick and that I can walk around on it. It's super sturdy. Everything is sealed up and I have not seen any leaks so far. Uh, it doesn't look the prettiest. I'd like to still put some like trim on top of here or something later on, but for right now it's super rugged. It's super tough and it's pretty much watertight. I have not had any issues with leaking so far. So Fingers crossed that it stays that way, right guys? Woo. Now we finally make it to the inside of the camper. Um, this is by far not even close to being done. And I was debating on whether I wanted to show you guys this so far, but I haven't put out a video in a while and I want to show my progress because I'm really proud of it. There's still so much more stuff <laughs> that I want to do in here. so. Um, so please be kind with the comments. I'm still working on it. Here's the interior windows and everything. I end up using um, handy board, which was really expensive, but definitely a lot more convenient to be able to put up the panels. Um, got the windows in here. I even got, like I said, the pleated shades, shades uh, that are in normal RVs. Same thing with the ones that's in the, the door there. So that way you can move that around. One of the issues that I had was the fact that I used two inch foam, foam board insulation all the way around this. I can show you that in the pictures. And that's good for insulation. The bad thing is normal RVs don't use that much. So when I got these windows and the trim, they don't quite fit. There's this big gap right here that shows the foam and the board and stuff like that, that I don't know how to fill in or how to make that look good, I guess. So still gotta figure that out. In here, I actually have a twin mattress. I've made this bed frame here that I can sit and sleep on. And underneath, I've got enough room for a Dometic fridge that I'm gonna get. I've measured it out, the Dometic fridge. And then underneath here is probably gonna go like a cassette toilet or one of those uh, Dometic little portable RV toilets that I can just dump out in, in, any, uh, in any restroom or whatever. As for water, a lot of people are wondering, this is gonna be as of right now, a dry camper. Water is a totally 
separate other nightmare that I have to that, that I'll have to worry about. Maybe one day down the road, but who plumbing and everything like that. Super a uh, lot of work, a lot of work. Here you can see kind of the height of the bed and how everything fits in here. Now eventually I want to put cabinets all the way across there. All the way across there. And I can hang it under there, put some nice lights and whatnot. But underneath here, this is where I'm going to put the, the Dometic fridge. And then underneath here, that's where the, uh, the toilet and probably some more storage will go. I still haven't fully designed everything. Right here is, I definitely want to be able to build some sort of a table that I can sit at, that I can either, it's like multi-purpose, that I can cook at, that I can, um, you know, uh, edit videos, a station that I can charge stuff at. So, I don't know, so, something needs to go right here. In here, I have, these are the pass-throughs so far that I have. Like I said, here's the inside of the, um, the NOCO pass-through charger it's a dual dual window it's already sealed and covered up up there i got the the hole there for that coming through um so hopefully everything's turning out pretty good here behind me you can see the door and the trim is definitely not finished yet i still haven't figured that part out yet but it's getting there all new door hardware locks it seals up. I can get in and out. I need to figure out some steps because the Moride steps that I want don't actually work. This is a a door from oh I'd say what was that a like an old uh, old camper, old uh, truck bed camper. So it's only 21 inches wide. The minimum that Moride steps or anything else that I can see are 26. So I got to figure out something on that. But I got the handle here, all the latches and whatnot. So. Anyways, I hope you guys have liked this camper build that I have so far. This is Crawler Hauler 2.0, my second iteration of uh, trying to or attempting to build something like this. So, hope you guys like what I'm showing you. I'll try to put in some more pictures and keep you guys updated on my next trip and how this goes. But thank you for following along and hope you like what I'm showing you.